So what geometric properties does a cross product have? The probably the most important one to understand is what's called the right hand rule. And what is a right hand rule? I'm going to draw uh, my right hand. And uh, if you're bad at drawing, you can just try to copy down what I'm going to draw here. So that's <coughs> a thumb. And that's the first finger, that's the second finger, and then the last two fingers are going to be folded over. So kind of like a peace sign with the thumb out as well. That's a really bad thumb. Good enough. All right, so that's a right hand, and this is the first vector, V1. That's the second vector, V2. And the thumb represents V1 cross V2. So you should be holding your right hand up and thinking about first finger is the first vector, second finger is the second vector, and thumb is a cross product. Your last two fingers don't, uh, don't serve any purpose in this uh, right here. So if you're a Ninja Turtle, you can still do the right hand rule. You only need two fingers and a thumb. All right, so what is this representing? Let me draw a stylized version with vectors drawn as vectors. So you got two vectors like this and the thumb or the cross product is going to point perpendicular to both of these two vectors. So the cross product gives you a third vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to the first two. And that's our first geometric property and probably the most important geometric property of the cross product. So the cross product of two, and these do need to be non-zero. is orthogonal to both vectors. So this is still hard to visualize. Uh, another very good way to think about this, uh, you just have two vectors, v1 and v2, and think about them spanning a plane. So your first two fingers, uh, if you basically set them on a table or the floor or some flat surface, the cross product will point directly out away from the surface. So we draw planes a lot of times like this. So just think of this as a plane right here. And both the vectors are in the plane. Then the cross product is going to point directly up out of the plane. Now we can see the anti-commutative property here. So take your hand without flicking people off, swap your first and second finger. So by to do this, you need to don't move your hand at all, move your elbow and wrist. So don't rotate your fingers around, rotate your actual your entire hand so that wherever vector one used to be, vector two points that direction. And what happens to your thumb when you swap the direction your fingers are pointing, your thumb points directly downwards. Uh, I'm not, not an artist, so I'm not going to attempt to draw this, um, but basically you're rotating your wrist halfway around is how you're going to do this. And you'll see your thumb point straight down and your fingers point the, the vector, finger one points the direction finger two used to point and vice versa. So that, that's how you can see the anti-commutative property. What would happen here in the plane if you swap V1 and V2? the cross product would point, wow, the cross product would point the opposite direction or downwards directly out of the plane. So that's our geometric property of the cross product. There are a couple other properties um, there for computing areas. They're important, but really this is the fundamental uh, property of the cross product is it gives you a third vector that's orthogonal or perpendicular to the first two. Uh, there's gonna be one time where this fails and I'll talk about it um, 
in the next set of properties. So we can use the cross product to compute areas. So we'll start out the parallelogram. So how do you form a parallelogram from two vectors? Well, you need to get two more vectors. And I'll do this in green here. So I'm copying vector one, and now I'm copying vector two to make a parallelogram. And I want to know the area. So what's the area of this parallelogram? Uh, one way to compute it is vector one cross vector two. And what you're going to do after that is take the magnitude of that vector. So that is how to get the area of a parallelogram. And remember, when you do a cross product, you're going to get a vector. Cross product of two vectors is another vector. And then take the magnitude. We can also do a area of a triangle as well, um, which we'll get to next.